I think encouraging women to showcase their talent, whether it's in the jewelry field or any other field, it's give them more stability, more voice, and more empowering on the things that they are very good at. It's very important to have uh, role models because representation matters a lot. I never believed that there is a limit. Uh, whether it's social, cultural, political barriers, I always wanted to embrace change. Hello, welcome to Qatar 365. I'm Adil Halim, and on this episode, we meet more women who are raising the bar in their professions, who are shining examples for the people around them. But first, we're here at the Doha Jewelry and Watches exhibition, where all that glitters is gold and gems and diamonds and pearls. Along with celebrating luxury and elegance, the event also put a spotlight on up-and-coming Qatari designers. Laila Humaira got to meet some of those inspiring businesswomen. You can say that Witter Jewelry's signature collection is more than meets the eye. Witter is an Arabic word. It means one or unique one or the only one. And that applies to the eye print. Founder and CEO Reem Al Shamari uses cutting edge technology to turn each unique print into bespoke pieces of jewelry. As soon as I got the patent, I started working on the first piece, and it was like amazing. It wasn't an, an easy journey because even capturing the eye print needed like a special studio, and we built that studio. The idea of immortalizing eye prints into gold came from looking deeper into Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. I realized that eye prints are second to DNA, so every person has their own eye print. Like you and I have two eye prints, not only one. So I thought, why not? Just like no two eye prints are alike, no two jewelry pieces by Witter are ever the same. This uniqueness and exclusivity made Witter stand out at the 20th edition of the Doha Jewelry and Watches exhibition. When it comes to supporting local designers, there's no bigger cheerleader than the Doha Jewelry and Watches exhibition. Every year, the event has a special Qatari pavilion featuring homegrown brands and women-owned businesses. This provides a major launch pad for designers keen on bedazzling the international market. This is not something new for TGWE for the support of the Qatari talent and encourage always the, the young Qatari artists to continue in such field. And this is something important that the DGWE uh, support and, uh, and sponsor, and even like uh, host as much as possible, encompassing the Qatari talents with their pieces and special talents that they showcase during the exhibition time. Another designer showcasing her designs is Samira Al Mullah. The Hesa Jewels collection incorporates traditional Islamic items capturing the essence and beauty of Arabic women. Samira, who's also a banker, doesn't see why jewellery can't be both an accessory and an investment, while at the same time a celebration of elegance and femininity. Whether it's creating one-of-a-kind jewellery pieces or a collection inspired by tradition and heritage, the DJWE wants to keep providing a platform for Qatari designers for decades to come. I think encouraging women to showcase their talent, whether it's in the jewellery field or any other field, it's give them more stability, more voice, and more empowering on the things that they are very powerful and they are very good at. Global tech leaders, investors, and entrepreneurs recently converged in Doha as Qatar became the first Middle Eastern and North African country to host the Web Summit, the world's largest technology conference. I caught up with Web Summit CEO Catherine Marr to find out what the event will bring to the fast-growing tech scene in the region. Hello, welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa ahlan wa sahlan bikum. 
the Web Summit Qatar. Catherine, Web Summit has become the marquee global digital event. You could have taken the brand anywhere. What brought you here to Doha? Yeah, I, so I think the reason Web Summit came to Doha was that we saw an increase year over year in attendees uh, to our event in Lisbon from this part of the world. We felt as though the Middle East region in general was a place where there is tremendous opportunity and activity and hunger for something that like Web Summit and Qatar, after conversations, really seemed to share the same vision around a very startup focused event uh, that would be something that we could build on to really think about how to kickstart the innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem while also taking advantage of the fact that the location of Qatar is not just tremendously central for the Arabic speaking world, but also has access to you know, the entire African market, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the like. So it just felt like a really natural fit. What changes have you seen as more and more women enter the tech space? Well, women in technology has been a big focus of Web Summit ever since our start. We're known uh, globally for our flagship women in tech programs. Our women in tech track here in Qatar sold out, uh, which we're really excited about. But 30% of the startups that are attending are women founded. And then, you know, in terms of attendee ratios, we always look to have a really high percentage of, of female technologists at the events. Overall, the ratio for women in technology doesn't look as good as it does at Web Summit, unfortunately. I think in terms of you know, venture-based funding, only about 2% of overall venture capital goes to female-founded startups. So there's clearly a long way to go, but that's actually one of the things that we're so proud of at Web Summit is that our commitment to really foregrounding female founders, female entrepreneurs, engineers, technologists, um, is a way to point the industry towards the opportunity. What you'll see as you walk around is some of these sort of uh, almost booth-like areas with what we call chipboard uh, are all of our startups. And so when you're seeing the hanging sign, those are startups that have applied to be here that are what we really think are sort of the future of the industry. Um, and they're here to give their pitches, presentations, talk about their companies. Uh, and so we really think of that as like the core of the Web Summit experience. And then around that, you also have some of these larger booths that represent trade delegations, that represent large tech companies um, who are here also to demonstrate what it is that they're working on. Uh, they run classes, they have all sorts of resources that are available. And that mixture of everything from you know, the, the earliest stage startup to the latest stage tech company is, I think, part of what makes Web Summit really special. 2023 was an amazing year for women in sports. And as this is an Olympic year, it can only get better. I caught up with a few trailblazers who helped champion the rise of female athletes. Honey Taljia knows her way around a football pitch. Growing up in Palestine, it's where she found her peace. We grew up in a war zone in the hopelessness uh, of uh, war. I thought that I could do something and um, I was born as a rebel, in fact, actually. I wanted to change the circumstances around me. I never believed that there is a limit. Whether it's social, cultural, political barriers, I always wanted to embrace change. That change came through her passion for football. Honey manages public relations for FIFA, but during her playing days, she was the first captain of the Palestinian women's national team. Football gave me the tool to embrace uh, those barriers and uh, gave me the power and liberated me to come across all these barriers uh, with confidence and with uh, a lot of uh, uh, persistence um, and a lot of resilience to just believe that uh, one day I can uh, be somewhere through football. And uh, that's how it all started. I always say from the streets of Bethlehem to the world stages of FIFA and beyond. Including Doha, where she recently moderated a panel at a forum fittingly called Game Changers. Someone else who's changed the game is Ibtihaj Mohammed. She was the first U.S. athlete to wear hijab while competing at the Olympics and the first Muslim American female to win an Olympic medal. There's a lot of people who don't want to see us, especially in a space like fencing, which uh, historically has been a, a white sport. So um, it's nice to know that in those moments where I was competing at the highest level of sport, whether it was at World Championships or at the Olympics, I really felt like I was doing it for the communities that I'm a part of, for the Muslim community, 
for the black community um, and you know for women and girls all over the world no matter what you look like what your beliefs are uh, you have and should always have a place in sport. To help with this Generation Amazing the legacy initiative of the 2022 World Cup is on a mission to make sure all children have a place in sports. Through its public outreach and education programs, such as this one on National Sports Day, Generation Amazing is using the transformative power of sports to inspire and empower young people around the world. Paulette Fortez Sanchez says Generation Amazing has programs in 75 countries across five continents and has impacted the lives of more than one million people. It's very important to have uh, role models because w representation matters a lot. So as a young girl, if you see a very successful woman, whether it's in sport or in business or else, it gives you aspiration. It helps as well all these girls to dream big and just to realize that everything or anything is possible. And who better to look up to than a trailblazing Olympic medalist who has inspired others, but is also inspired by the next generation. Oh, I love it. I think that we're in such an important time uh, for Qatar, but also for the region. Uh, this is a new era of sport. This is a new era for uh, women and girls in sport. Hopefully, they'll be able to see themselves participate in levels that we can't even imagine. From the playing field to the boardroom to cyberspace, women are breaking new ground in the world of sports, business, and tech. We hope you enjoyed this episode and were inspired by some of the incredible stories of perseverance and determination. That's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Cutter 365.